It's week one of the National Football League, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Browns and the Steelers, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. With my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, we have arrived at another new season. Had a little more pep in my step this morning. <laughs> I know you did as well. Here we go. Yeah, when you went out for your five-mile jog, you were flying. <laughs> you did it in record time because you were psyched up about this game. But let's be frank about it. No more radio shows. No more podcasts. No more just predicting what's going to happen. Now we get to see it on the field. Get strapped in. It's just about time to get the party started. And with towels waving, we're underway from Heinz Field. And that'll carry Let's over go. the back Let's line go. of the Let's end go. zone for a touchback. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback who grew up just outside of Cleveland on Lake Erie, Mitchell Trubisky. Well, he certainly had his ups and downs since being the second overall selection back in 2017. But when he's on, Mitchell Trubisky shows all the attributes you're looking for in a quarterback. Big arm, excellent legs for mobility. His key, being consistent. They'll start on the ground with Harris. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, speed is definitely a calling card if you play cornerback in this league, and he does a terrific job there of hustling in quickly to make the play. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And if you're looking for proof of his speed, Next Gen stat shows that he was traveling just over 21 miles an hour there. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Shut down down he goes, folded down, like a lawn chair. Yeah. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Now Trubisky. Forced out to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. Call it a pickup of three and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Pulled in at the 24. A 40-yard punt, give him three right, on the return. Right, so right. here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Orchestrating the offense will be a man who, of course, won a national title back in his days at Clemson, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 
best to describe that one. I'd say right down Broadway oh, on that great. run. That's straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw is Watson. He'll buy some time right. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And able to go, rip go. off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. So Amari Cooper out of Northwestern High School in Miami making a nice play there. And it's so funny that when I was going through the draft process when he came out of Alabama and was inquiring about him and his skills, they say it all began back in Miami. He really became a pro receiver at a young age because of his attention to detail and precision. But don't forget his athletic ability. That's what made that catch there. And he did spend one year with Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback there, so that helped back in high school. He's going to fire one, corner of the end zone. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, 38 yards. And the Browns are on the board here first in the season opener. And that looked almost to be a case of, you know, a quarterback saying, hey, I'm going to throw this as far as I can and hope you run under it. Mission accomplished. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out of a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now a give, running left is Harris, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. On third down, Trubisky. Now he's forced out left, and he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, go, no return. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to Let's the go. end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Set. 
Watson being chased out left. And that is taken in by Njoku. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. Do that again. As a defense, what a nuisance when you look on the other side and they've got a tight end that can run a post route like that. And you felt the ground shake, didn't you? Oh, you've been all the way up here in this booth. How about when he grabbed the football? You could see the terror as everyone was thinking, do I even want to try and tackle that big man? So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Watson rolling to his right. Bears it out toward the corner of the end zone. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Score! Score! Amari Cooper already his touchdown second again. touchdown here in this hey. opening weekend. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure you just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. And that is off the left upright. It's no good. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. From the six. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Keep playing hard. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on their early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They hand this off to Harris. Good footwork at the 30. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Check pass, check pass. Lock in, lock in. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Looking left sideline, incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Play action. Now Trubisky. Pass incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Trubisky will throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. 51 yards on the punt there. We play to win. Let go. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. And he is closing in on the 100-yard mark for the day. 
and it appears that he loved the fact that they're going to play this game earlier. You know, he daytime, he's out there running around, feeling good about himself. Whatever his prep was coming in, he was able to get out there quick and fire away. The Browns drive about to get started. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Back to throw. Watson steps away to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Flush to his right. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Dancing to his left. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened, do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Now a first down throw, Watson. This is the tight end, the Joku. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Good, strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Watson on first down. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Here's Watson. To the right side, he's got Cooper. It's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's go, made baby. at the Steelers' 12-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Again, it's Watson. Eluding the pressure right. And he's got his big wide receiver complete. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second and four. They could still get a first down without scoring. Watson now to throw. Buying time to his left. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. They'll give it to Chubb. Oh, you got to feel it, baby. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown. Cleveland. He like that, Nick baby. Chubb. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. They have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. Oh. 
And that is off the left, upright. It's no good. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. Taken in at the three. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Here's Trubisky to throw. It's brought in by Harris. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And it's the Jets who have the lead with that one getting close to halftime. The Jets trying to finish that one off and claim victory. From there, we head to the Big Easy to check on the Saints at home in the Superdome. And you can see they trail in that matchup against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Leonard Fournette with two touchdown runs. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And right now, they have the lead over the visiting Dolphins. The Texans trying to start the season right and is looking good so far at home. On to a look at the next-gen stats for the Browns in that first half. And it was important for them to get the season off on the right foot. And they've done just that, thanks to a very solid outing by their passing offense thus far. And meanwhile, for the Steelers, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. It's a new season. So both of these coaching staffs likely making plenty of adjustments after their first half of football. So for the call of the second half here in week one, we go back to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. This one fielded at the five. And some good special teams coverage as we they bring this. him down just outside of the 15. Getting set to go again. We get a look at Amari Cooper as he heads back out there now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Now Watson, forced out to his left. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They will indeed snap it to Watson. 
He's got a first down past the 30. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Not sure I agreed with the decision to go for it, but I definitely agreed with his decision to run it. He picked up that big first down. I think he let his head coach off the hook. I, that's what I was just going to say. If there's anybody more happy than the quarterback picking it up, it's the coach that saw him pick it up. Uh, able to force him out of the pocket right, but still able to complete it. Let's and go, all the way go. down to the 22-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. A give. This is Chubb. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. 42 yards on the ground for him so far. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm... Kevin Stefanski consulted with his guys above, and they've told him, throw that challenge flag. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. So the challenge does not sway the official's decision. Spot of the football going to remain right. Oh, and he'll take it, it into Look the it end up, zone baby. for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So this looking more and more like it is going to be a successful kickoff to their campaign as they add on here. And partner, you know NFL coaches, they're on the sideline thinking about all the little things that need correcting. But for the most part, they've got to be ecstatic with the way this season has started out. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that will bump the lead up to 26. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. Olszewski going to hold on to this one. Touchback. Let's go, boys. Bring it up. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. It'll be a loss of 10, and it'll bring up second. But when you see a quarterback retreating away from the line of scrimmage toward the other goal line like that, usually doesn't end well. You're exactly right about that. Normally, if they're moving from side to side, they've got a chance maybe to get back upfield. He was trying to shake defenders and extend the play, but it doesn't work out very well for them at all. You need those extra yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now you're digging a hole for your offense. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Now it's Trubisky. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that has... And this is caught at the 20. 
And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. A big play on third there for the Steelers. But sometimes you just got to marvel at how these guys can throw the football. He gave that everything he had, and it was right on the money. They'll run on first down. It's Harris. Ooh, with a juke. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Throwing here, Trubisky. Completion here to Claypool. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll make it a second down. On the draw, it's Harris. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down and goal. Trubisky. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. That time the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. Now Trubisky to throw. That swung out wide to Harris. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That's going to bring up fourth down. Only a gain of two there. Here we go. It's Trubisky on fourth down. Touchdown. That's caught. Deontay Johnson from four yards out. And the Steelers are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Well, this opening game has certainly not gone their way to this point, but, yeah, that touchdown maybe a, a glimmer of hope for the long season ahead. And no one in this league likes to talk about moral victories. No one likes to really just say, okay, well, maybe something went right. But you're exactly right about that. A little glimmer there. Maybe they can carry it over moving forward. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And that'll make this a 19-point game. That time, a nine-play drive. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed go. the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Second down, here's Chubb again. Breaks a tackle. And he's taken down inside the 30. 58 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. 
And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And he'll take this one down near the 15. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. A shotgun snap for Watson. He gets it left side to Johnson. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. And off comes to Chubb. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. That second down play nets a minus four. And back at the eight now, third and goal. Now it's Watson. Flushed out right. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Running for it, here's one Chubb, and Here he takes go. this one in for a Brown on. score. Whoa. Nick Chubb with now three week one <laughs> touchdowns. And the Browns are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Well, this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. And oh, can you believe it? He misses another one, his third so far. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. Fielded right around the eight. Well, in this one, partner, we had some action all the way down to the final whistle there with the late points and then the kickoff to end it. Yeah, and the best part about it is just seeing how teams battled all the way to the end, you know. Didn't really matter. Scoreboard was pretty well set, but they still competed until the final whistle. So for Cleveland, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road. You can't ask for much more than that to start the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to New England to take on the Patriots. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Pittsburgh, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers.